Today I'm going to be showing you how to design and make these 8-bit gaming figures and to start with we're going to be making this ET. So the first thing we need to do to start making our model is to find a reference image. The way that I like to do this is from the game itself through an emulator. So I'm going to fire up my emulator now and I'm using the Stellar emulator for this and if I load up ET here, here it is, press start and just wait for him to leave his spaceship and we can use the inbuilt Windows snipping tool here and just cut him out directly here. So I'm gonna try and get decently close and I can save that there, save. And the one thing to note with emulators as well is sometimes that the aspect ratio of the games can be changed. So you do just wanna check that because you do want this to be pixel perfect. So I've saved that and if I close all these windows, I'm just gonna click on the image and there he is. And I can just use the inbuilt editing tools here just to crop it slightly so that we get rid of the background. So if I crop over there and there, there we go. Just save that again. And that is all ready to go now. So the next step is to turn our sprite into a 2D vector image. I would usually do this in Adobe Illustrator, but to make this video a little more accessible, I'm gonna be doing it in some free software called Inkscape. So if I just load that up now and wait for that to load click new document and that is loading there and the first thing I'm going to do on here is to make sure my page size is the same size as my sprite so I've loaded my sprite back up and made them nice and big here so we can start to count the pixels across the thing about ET is the pixels are a bit abnormal in the fact they are more like two by one rectangles instead of being one by one squares that they usually are so I'm going to count them across as rectangles so if I start doing that now I'll start with the width one two three four five six seven eight so that's eight rectangles across and if i count up one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen so that's 15 rectangles up so we know that it is eight by fifteen so if i go back to inkscape now we can set the page size now i'm back in inkscape i can set my page size and i'm just going to do that by clicking file and then document properties and it gives me the uh, properties to change here and I'm going to be working under the fact that each rectangle is going to be eight millimeters by four millimeters so for the width we know we had eight rectangles across so eight by eight is 64 and for the height we had 15 rectangles up so 15 by four is 60 and now we have that nice page created for us here and I can just zoom into that to make it nice and big so that is the page we're going to be drawing the sprite in um, and to make that a bit easier i'm just going to add a grid to it as well so it'll create a little pixel grid um so if i click new here it creates a new grid making sure that i change the units from pixels to millimeters i can add in the size of the rectangles so that's eight again by four and we have a nice grid here set up for us to start drawing the sprite so now that we've got our grid and our page size set up, we can drag in our reference image. So if I just move that over slightly, I can just, this is quite simple. I can literally just drag it in here, click OK, and there it is. If I make this screen bigger again, I'm just gonna position it right in the corner here. And then making sure to press Control so I don't edit the aspect ratio, drag it over so it fills the entire page and just to make sure i can check at the top here so the image has the same width and height as our page size as well um, and the last thing i'm going to do here is just change the name of our layer to sprite just to give us a nice layout for the sprite reference image so now we've got a layer for the sprite reference image. I'm just gonna add another layer for the vector shape. So I'm just gonna call this vector and add it here. And now that's ready and we're gonna be putting the shape into that layer. So to make that vector shape, the first thing we need to do is click on the rectangle tool. And then I'm just gonna start in the top corner there, make a rectangle that is the size of the page. So that looks to be good there but obviously we cannot see the reference image so I'm going to have to change the opacity of that rectangle and I can do that by clicking fill and stroke and then changing that opacity down there I'm going to do 40 percent and we can now have that rectangle above and can see the ET below it so we need to sort of edit this shape here to be the same shape as the ET and to do that we're going to click path then object to path 
and then this button here, the node tool, which will let us create little nodes on the side of the um, rectangle that we can then move to the shape of the ET. So if we create one there, we can put it on that point, and then another one for that point. And we're just gonna carry on throughout the whole ET, creating little nodes on each of the corners to create the shape. Now that we have the shape of ET, all we have to do now is cut out the eye here, which is quite simple to do. To start with, we can just create another rectangle, making sure that it is in the vector layer and put that over where the eye is. That should be good. We can just use the pointer tool to check that that is in the right coordinates and the right size, which it is. And then we can use shift to make sure we've selected both the eye rectangle and the entire um, shape and then click path and difference and that will cut out the eye there so if i hide my sprite here the sprite reference image we now have et here in all of his glory the only thing left to do is to give him his rightful color like that he is now green and all ready to be exported so we have et all traced and vectorized here and the next thing to do is to export it so that we can put it in the 3d printing slicing software so if we go to layers and objects the first thing to check is that you have selected the vector layer as that is the layer that you want to export so if i click file export it will open a tab here we want to make sure that we've selected export selected only so it will just be exporting that vector layer and i'm going to just open this up and change the name of this file to et vector and making sure that it is saving as an svg file and that is saving to the desktop so if i click save now and just check it's oh there it is it is saved there as an svg ready to put into the slicer now i have my svg file all i need to do is drag it into a slicer to print this i'm going to be using my prusa mini so i'm going to be using the prusa slicer so i'm just going to load this up now now that is all loaded i can drag my svg in if i make this full screen again we can see et there he is in the middle of the print bed the nice thing about the Prusa software is that it has a lot of these settings here where we can check that the size is correct. So remember we set our page size at 64 times 60, which it is here. So we know that the ET is the correct size. It has automatically changed this into a 3D model. So added depth here of 10 millimeters. I'm just gonna change this quickly to eight millimeters to make it pixel perfect to the game. Um, so that is all done. We can close that and we have him there at the right size with a depth of eight millimeters. We don't have to keep it at that though. You can see we have scaling options here for the 3D model. So for example, if I wanted to change him to be double the size, I can say it's 200% and you see it's blown it up to be basically the entire print bed. Um, to start off with, I'm not gonna be printing it that big. Um, I'm gonna be going back to 100, but it is very cool that we can just change the scale up there. But I have all of my settings set with what I want to print it at. So all that's left to do is slice it and get it printed. So there we have it, five minutes in Inkscape and 45 minutes printing and I have my own little ET figure to put on my shelf. Now that I've made the ET figure, which is a single color model, I'm gonna repeat that process for a multicolor model. And to do that, I'm gonna demonstrate using Mario. I've already completed a lot of the beginning steps like we did for ET. I've pulled in the reference image from the emulator, I've created the page size, and I've also created the grid. This is where it deviates a bit from ET in the fact that as this is a three color model, I have to create four different vector layers one for the outline and one for each of the different colors. So I'm gonna do that now and I'll be back when it's done. So I'm back and I've traced all of the colors and now just like I did with the ET they just need to be exported to SVG but unlike the ET this has four different layers so I've got to make sure that all of the layers are selected together before they're exported and then I can move on to the next step importing them into Fusion 360. Now I'm back in Fusion I can import my SVG so if you click insert here insert SVG and then I can get it from the computer there we go Mario Vector 
and just place that there. And the one thing about Fusion 360 is for whatever reason, it does not import sizing correctly from Inkscape. So I have got to change the scale here. I mean, I did a bit of Googling and found out there is a specific scaling number that will uh, correct the sizing. Um, so, and that number is 3.77952. So if I do that, that will be the same size as what we say in, in Inkscape. So if I click finish sketch, we can see our sketch here. I'm going to start by just extruding the entire sketch. So if I hover over all of them, select all of them, click extrude. I'm going to do it to eight millimeters. I do it to eight millimeters because that's a nice chunky size so that they'll stand up quite nicely. So if I set that there, we have the first level done. Um, and I'm going to do three different levels here. So this is going to be the base level. I'm going to make that the orangey color and then do two levels for the green and the red. So if I minimize that screen, I've got my Mario little sprite here that I can just use to refer back to for the colors. So what I'm going to do is just hide my body quickly and make sure that my sketch is enabled so I can see that. And I'm going to do the green next. So if I select all of the green little areas here match that up with the reference image so that should be all matched up turn the body back on and click extrude there i'm going to extrude these to 10 millimeters making sure that i turn it to join rather than cut i click okay we can see that's all extruded there and i can do the same for the red one so if i turn the body off make sure the sketch is on Select the red areas here, turn the body back on, click extrude, and I'm going to do these at 12 millimeters and join. There we go. So that is all extruded out and then ready to be sliced and printed. I almost forgot, but I'm going to show you now how to export this for 3D printing. So the first thing we need to make sure of is that the entire model is selected. And then we can go to file, 3D print, and then we have the settings here. You make sure it's SDL format. And if this is checked here, make sure it is unchecked. And then we can click OK and then give it a name. So just name it Mario in my case and then click save. And then that is ready for slicing. So I've got that STL we just exported loaded up into the Bamboo Labs slicer and as we made this model with three layers I'm going to print it in three different colours. So I've got the sprite open here as a colour reference and I have found three different colours of PLA filament that I'm going to use. So I'm just going to get these loaded into the printer now. Now I've just loaded my filament into the Bamboo AMS, sliced the model here and also marked the layers where the colour changes are. This printout will do my colour changes for me automatically. However, if you are using a single colour printout, you can still do this. You'll just have to change the filament manually. So let's get printing. So here it is, hot off the print bed. And honestly, I'm very impressed with how it turned out. If I show it to you here, you can see that the color changes have worked very well and there's a nice 3D effect with the layers as well. And for reference, I have printed this in a single color. So I've put this one over here just in red and you can definitely see where the different layers are. It adds a 3D effect and you can tell that it is Mario because if I compare, turn it over, not as distinctive on the back, but from the front, very, very nice and it has worked very well. Now, that was a little insight into how I designed my 8-bit figures. As you can see, it was a very simple and quick process. And to prove how quick it was, while this ET was printing, I even designed him his little spaceship he can sit in. So hopefully I've inspired you to have a go. And if you do, I'd love to see what you make on social media. Just remember to tag me in. All of my socials are in the description. And that's all for today. I'll see you next time.